Hi guys, it's Manek from EarlyLearningMom.com. I am so excited to share with you guys that Little Z just completed um, the Bookshark um, homeschool curriculum for Level K. Now don't be thrown off. He is doing Grade 1 this year. Um, Level K is designed for kids ages 5 to 7. So, well, when you hear the words K Level K, you are think most people like myself. I thought kindergarten. However, Bookshark doesn't follow that um, kind of grouping. It's level K's for ages five to seven. Level one is for ages six to eight. And they highly recommend that you put your child in the middle to the higher end of the age bracket. So while level K is for five to seven year olds, you may not want to put a fresh new five-year-old into that program. They may do better in the um, pre-K curriculum that we did last year, which is designed for four to five-year-olds. So last year we did pre-K, this year we did level K, and in September we'll be starting level one. So I wanted to share with you some of the materials that we used with Bookshark and what we loved and what we maybe didn't love so much. So start off, we use these Fun Tale Readers. Um, these are very similar to like Bob books. Um, you know, they start off really simple and then they eventually move on to books like this. This is the, this one here was the first book in the series and this is book 27 and kind of what your child's reading. Um, I noticed with Bookshark they don't push um, like lots of reading. We did do the um, Explode the Code books like the pre-K or the K to 1 books, the um, um, Get Set for the Code series um, and then these books, but there wasn't a lot of like real pushing for reading, which is okay because in our house, Little Z was already reading. These were just practice to work on reading out loud. Um, we didn't love these books. We didn't hate them, but I mean, they're very similar to Bob books. So um, I think that would have worked just as well. Um, but I'm not a big fan of Bob books either. So a lot of the books that we read are chapter books, but there were several spines as well to the curriculum. So this book we used year for the whole year. We used it for science and for history slash geography. It is um, kind of a detailed kids encyclopedia. And so we went through this. Um, it was really good. We enjoyed it. Um, I did find some of the pages sometimes got really, um, they were really busy. Whereas we tend to do a little better with, you know, simple words and simple pictures. It's just less distracting, but it served its purpose. We also used this book um, near the end, the Usborne Book of Wild Places, Mountains, Jungles, and Deserts. And this was another one, while the information was good, it was very, very, very busy. So um, he did better with the children's encyclopedia than he did with the wild places. We kind of went through the wild places really quickly because he wasn't that thrilled with it. Um, However, science books like this, we use um, How Flowers Grow and Weather. These are all Usborne books as well. These ones were a little simpler. And the words were nice and big. And there was just like, you know, one concept per page. Um, he did better with these. We really like these. And I have others that I plan to pull out next year to work through. We also read this Treasury for Children and it is such a sweet book with many sweet stories and beautiful illustrations. 
So we did enjoy this. Um, these stories are a bit longer, but Z sat through them, no problem. He loved them. We used Richard Scarry's book of Please and Thank You to work on you know, manners and character development. Now I should mention that Bookshark is a um, it's not secular, but it's not religious. It's um, I think what do they call it? Religious religion neutral. So there is some mention of God in some books. Um, we did talk about um, different religions using this book. So um, it's the sister company of Sunlight. And Sunlight is a very Christian curriculum. So if you're kind of looking for a curriculum that's really literature based, but more on the secular side, Bookshark's the way to go. Now this is a book we did not use. Um, it's the story of exploration. Um, we just found it really dull. So we skipped this one. We just didn't read it. I tried. Z was not into it. And I'm not interested in pushing him to listen to books that he's not enjoying. Because there's so many good books out there that can teach history without boring your child to death. So, um, but my girlfriend uses this with her son, and they seem to enjoy it, but for us, it was not a fit. For science, we did use this, um, Usborn, the Usborn Book of Science um, Activities, ac Volume 2, and because Z can sometimes be really grabby and have a hard time following um, along with experiments, um, we just read a lot about the experience, experiments. So if you are a family that maybe travels a lot and you're roads like car schooling um, and setting up a little lab or you maybe you don't have a little kitchen to set up stuff, um, this is an alternative. So we, there was just different things we read about each week. This was um, a graphic novel that we read near the end um, that talked about uh, Isaac Newton. This one um, my would be better for my older son compared to my younger son. He, um, once again, it was just a little too busy for him. So we did read it. We completed it. I don't think he was really thrilled with that, though. However... We read about Johnny Appleseed, and as a Canadian, I never learned much about Johnny Appleseed growing up. Um, it just w is not something that was taught in the Canadian curriculum, or at least when I went to school. So, we really enjoyed this book. It was a much longer book. Um, it was meant to be read over several days, but the illustrations were beautiful. The story was wonderful, um, so we really enjoyed this book. Every um, week we'd read a couple poems out of this book of Mother Goose and it was good. Um, I've read a lot of Mother Goose um, with Little Z and as I'm sure most um, you know, book loving families do. Um, so it was nice to hit some that he really recognized and um, introduce some different nursery rhymes that we were not we hadn't read before um, the pictures were sometimes interesting but overall we really enjoyed this book and I feel like I'm missing something hang on one second okay so I was missing one book I thought I had gathered everything up but we also had the book, The Llama Who Had No Pajamas. Um, it's a poetry book for kids. And once or twice a week, we'd read a couple poems out of here. Z seemed to like it. I wasn't crazy about it, but I'm not a big poetry person. I like to read for the purpose of a story, and I don't like dancing around with a lot of you know, silly words and stuff like that. He, Like I said, he seemed to enjoy it. Um, but for me, I'm kind of biased, so I wasn't thrilled with it. But 
I try to push myself through that and understand that, you know, just because I don't like it doesn't mean that Z won't like it. So we read it. I know a lot of people like this book, uh, and Zakari seemed to. We use these three instruction guides. So, okay, one thing I'm going to mention, I do get my instruction guides spiral bound. I just find it's easier to keep it open on whatever week we're on and just follow along. I tab the sides um, and I just go that way. I know a lot of people use the really big binders or you know they pull out the week that they're on um, which is great. If that works for you that's awesome but for me getting them spiral bound at the local staples is the way to go. So we used um, Intro to World Cultures. And then we had this big book here with um, language arts. And before I spiral bound the language arts um, one, I pulled out all the activity sheets and I kept them separate in a separate binder so we could pull them out when we needed them. We also used um, biology, and, oh, biology, botany, and physics for our science. So you can see one of the little tabbies the last one's left, but I, I tabby them all and then we peel away the tabbies as the weeks go along so we can kind of see how we're doing. But like I said, I leave it open on the week that we're on. Just that's how I organize it and it works well for us. So before I jump into the chapter books and kind of give you my opinions on those, we also have this Inquisa Kids discover and do level K and we did watch some of them Z wasn't really into it he preferred reading about them as opposed to watching the videos so while we did a few of them we did skip quite a few of them okay now this is not in any particular order um, and we did um, miss a couple which ones did we not read um, Visas and Ramon we had read earlier in the year um, do I have that here? I might actually have that one in the book pile. Uh, yes, I do. Oh, so anyhow, I'll skip that one. And the little house on the big hill, we also have it here. We had read this one last year, so we skipped this one. I landed up reading a few of the smaller little house chapter books. Um, because I found he wasn't that terribly interested in Little House in the Par uh, in the Big Woods, but once we started reading the smaller books, it kind of got him into the characters, and now I think he's ready to read these bigger books. So uh, we'll probably be reading Little House in the, on the Prairie hopefully this summer, and I think he'll be into it. We uh, read the story of Doctor Doolittle. This was an awesome book. We both enjoyed it. Um, it was a little longer than I typically read with him. It was like 150 plus pages. But um, for me, when we were assigned this book, I was thinking about the Dr. Doolittle with Eddie Murphy. And I thought it'd be really silly, but it was actually a really awesome book. So that one pleasantly surprised me. I didn't know what to think about this one when we got it. It's called No Children, No Pets. Um, it, the only place you can get it new is through Bookshark and I believe Sunlight. It's not a book that you can buy new on Amazon. However, um, so I thought uh, it looks a little... I kind of judged a book by its cover and thought it would be on the boring side because it looks old-fashioned. Um, but it was pleasantly surprising. It was surprisingly pleasant, I should say and um, we really enjoyed it. It kind of had the boxcar children kind of feel to it, like that type of writing. So we enjoyed it. My Father's Dragon. We liked it. Um, I have to say it's a little far-fetched and make-believe kind of silly for me, but I was able to get through it and my son really enjoyed it. Um, we landed up buying the um, the trilogy together so we can read the other two books in the series. There's Elmer and the Dragon and there's the Dragon of Blue Land. So we'll read them. Um, and like I said, he enjoyed them. This book, this is like my style of book, was 
um, Out of Darkness, the story of Louis Braille. We landed up after reading this book. We read everything we can get our hands on about Louis Braille. The story is really touching. It's heartbreaking. Um, and it was really well written for children. So um, that's kind of like my genre that I really appreciate. And Little Z seemed really interested in it. This is one we skipped. It's The House at Pooh Corner. Um, we read uh, Winnie the Pooh last year with Bookshark. It's just, it's too silly for us. Like just, kind of, I felt like it was a waste of time. And I would have trudged through it and put my, like, I would have put my feelings aside. And I really tried to read it with expression. And just little Z wasn't into it. I wasn't into it. So we put it away. And that's okay. We did find, like, there's, I know I'm pointing out a lot of the books that didn't work for us. However, the books that did work for us were worth it, 100%. Um, we read this book last year here, 20 and 10. We read it again this year. It is really short. I think it's 75 or 76, 76 pages. Um, it's a really good um, way that kids can understand what it was like to live in France during the time that the Nazis occupied France. And um, it's about a classroom of kids back then uh, families sent it, um, sent their children into the country, into little schools, um, just to keep them safe from a lot of the, um, the war that was happening in the bigger cities. And this is a, kind of a, a tale about um, one of these classrooms and what happens with the, when the Nazis were coming and they were actually hiding away ten Jewish um, children and they had to, you know, they, they were, I believe, 10 years old when the Nazis came and they were trying to get the information out. Where were their friends, like their, the other 10 Jewish students? So it was amazing. Um, I've lent this book out a few times and everybody that's read it has loved it. I actually have two copies. I have the one that stays with the, I keep all my bookshark curriculum together in like a, a tub and we put it away um, until I'm ready to either use it with somebody or we're ready to get rid of it. I have a copy to keep on my shelf as well. Now there's Mary on Horseback, Three Mountain Stories, and it is about a nurse on the frontier in the mountains um, and uh, during World War One, and bringing health care to families that didn't have it. So these were awesome stories. We really enjoyed that. The Light on Turn Rock was another great story. Um, it was about Ronnie and his aunt that went to... Um, his aunt and uncle used to take care of the lighthouse. Um, the person that was taking care of the lighthouse now wanted to go see some family and um, it's a great story about um, you know li when somebody does something to you um, they don't always think of how do I explain that it's basically um, they land up being waiting for this person to come I'm trying not to give away the story here but anyhow, Ronnie has to learn that sometimes just because somebody um, misleads you, they don't always mean to be um, vindictive. Um, and so it's a story of forgiveness and making the best of certain circumstances. So it was a really good book. I hope I explained that well. It's not a long read, um, 62 pages, but it was really good. Then we read A Grain of Rice. And this was another great, it's kind of a, a um, fable. And um, yeah, I believe, where was it? Yeah, so it was a, a fable and um, about a poor man that fell in love with a princess. And she, the emperor's, basically the emperor's daughter. And she wanted, they loved each other, and but the emperor would have, there was no way his daughter was marrying a lowly, you know, 
man in society. So it was kind of how he bettered himself, and he actually used his his brain to kind of outwit everybody and get himself into a position that he could marry the emperor's daughter. We read Beezus and Ramona, um, but we had read it earlier in the year, not when, like I mentioned before, um, when we were supposed to read it, so we just didn't bother reading it the second time. Here's a penny. Now this is an awesome book. You need to get your hands on it. If you are you have kids that are past the level K, um, it's a great book. We actually landed up getting the um, second book, which is Penny and Peter. He's such a sweet boy. Um, they talk about adoption in this book. Um, it kind of, once again, gives me the feel. It's kind of written similar to the way the boxcart children were written, like, you know, in the 60s, and um, it was reprinted. So we've read the this one, and then we landed up getting the second one. The third one hasn't been reprinted, so I can only purchase it for, like, the vintage copies, and I don't like the idea of spending $25 on a book. I might do it, because it was so good. I just really wish they'd reprint it, because it would be awesome. Um... Okay, I am missing another book here. I'm not going to go get it. I'm just going to explain. Um, we did read Dolphin Adventures. And we also read the um, Dolphin, uh, the Treasure Hunt. I believe it's called Treasure Hunt. Did I mention it in here? Uh, Dolphin Treasure. Um, but that's in my pile of books that we read this month. So when I do what uh, Raising Bookworms, I'll talk about it then. But it this book is about... Um, Wayne Grosvenor, who is a diver, and he lands up helping a dolphin and saving a dolphin. It's kind of the story of how that happened. And then Dolphin Treasure, which we read at the end of the year, um, is about the same dolphin that tends to dive with um, with Wayne and um, helps save his life. So, awesome books. I for some reason, Bookshark had us read book one and book three, but they didn't have us read book two. So I have book two coming in the mail because I want to know. They talked about um, how the father dolphin helped save them from sharks, and I want to read about that. And Z wants to read about it, so we ordered it. Okay, so this year we got introduced to the Boxcar Children. Um, if you're new to my channel, then you haven't really heard me talk about it in my raising um, bookworms. Um, series every month I review what we read the month before and we're avid readers so we read between like 11 and 18 19 chapter books a month um, but the box cart children where have they been my whole life I know these books were available when I was a kid cause they were written in like the 1920s some of them um, the first 19 are written by the original author and then the rest of them are inspired um, but wow, wow, we just love these books. They are, like I said, on the, a little bit on the longer side. They're 150 plus pages. Um, but we try to read one a month or one every six weeks. I think we're on book five or six. I think we've finished book five and we're going on to book six. Um, awesome. You need to pick them up. You need to read them. Apparently, I've had my head in the sand and my whole childhood I missed out. And finally, the last chapter book I'm going to talk about today is The Hundred Dresses. Now, this was written, I believe, in the 60s. Um, oh, shoot, 40s. 40s. But it is still very relevant today. It's written from a girl's perspective, still very relevant to little boys. They talk about, um, you know, this little girl and she says she has a hundred dresses but she always just wears the same dress and they know she doesn't have much money and the girls kind of taunt her and kind of say oh tell me about your other dresses and they get her talking but meanwhile they're laughing behind her back and one of the girls knows that this isn't right but because she is also poor but kind of like her friend isn't she is scared to stand up to her friend and it talks about the importance of you know 
standing up for people and that you're you could be just as guilty being a bystander and not doing anything to help somebody that's being bullied or teased uh, it talks about their regret and how sometimes you can't you can't make up for this stuff if you don't stand up for somebody in need um, it's just it's an awesome read. I can't do it justice. It's a short read. Um, how many pages is this? Um, 80. And I mean, like, there are lots of pictures. There are, like, pencil crayon kind of drawings. Very simplistic. The writing is big. You know, you could read it, like, we read it, I think, in two sittings. Um, it's a Newberry Honor book highly recommend it. It, yeah, books like these and like this and like this, these books are what makes Bookshark so amazing. They pull books together that I probably wouldn't have picked up myself. Like here's a penny. Nah, I would have left it on the bookshelf. I seen this at the thrift store when I was searching. I would have left it. Um, you know, boxcar children. I would have thought, meh, boring. I didn't read it when I was a kid. Like, it's amazing. 100 Dresses, probably wouldn't have picked it up. Um, I can guarantee you I wouldn't have picked up a grain of, of rice. Um, I would have looked at the cover of this, thought it was boring. But Bookshark has really, like, encompassed all these great books and, you know, created a reading schedule. We don't necessarily follow their reading schedule. We will, like, they'll tell us to read one chapter and we'll read like four chapters, five chapters, six chapters. Um, I know they have a purpose to, you know, let the child absorb each kind of step of the way, but I know for Z that we need to just keep going and we need to just to drag it out. He kind of forgets what happened at the beginning, so it's just best for us to move through them quickly. But that is it. I really liked it. I know I did mention a lot of books that didn't work for us. You got to remember when you're building such a big curriculum, you can't make everybody happy. And overall, I think it was well worth um, us picking up. So if you have any questions about any of the books that we read or um, how um, I used it with a child with autism, be sure to comment down below. Um, and I'll chat with you in the comments. Thanks for watching, and check out my blog at www.earlylearningmom.com. Have a great day.